Wow, nice spray. It's spinning, cool purple light. New tutorial. All right, welcome back to another video. Today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Now, if you come over to our table here, you can see that we've got a couple of smoothie products. And what I wanna do with these today is create something that's a little bit more retro, ethereal. Now, this right here is the Edelkrone Pan Pro. I used this in my last video. And today we've got a piece of plastic wrapped in green painter's tape because that's gonna be keyed out along with our green screen in the back. You could even use a Lazy Susan. Anything you have lying around your house that spins, you can turn a product on that. So very important up here, this is our Aperture 300D it is lighting our green screen. It is super important to have a nicely lit green screen. If it is not nicely lit, you will not get a clean key when you're trying to remove it in post. Over here for our key light, this is an Aperture 300X. All this is doing is lighting our subject. Now this stuff right here, this is sticky tack. If you've never heard of sticky tack, you're missing out because this is great for shooting videos. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stick it to the bottom of our product here, like so. And this is what's gonna allow us to then stick our product on top of this little extension we built on our turntable. And I'm noticing that an issue that we run into when we have top-down sort of lighting like this is that we're getting a lot of shadows underneath our bottle here. So to combat that, we're gonna need a little light here. This is an Aperture MC light. I just got it set to daylight. And we're gonna stick it right under our product here and that'll create a nice fill underneath our bottle. Now this next step is extra, but it is the little things that make the big difference. We have another Aperture MC light and we have it set to an orange hue. We're gonna place it beside our subject here a little bit from the back and that's gonna create a little orange kick along the side of our bottle here. And what's great about this little light is that once we swap out our product for a different color, we can simply just shift the hue on the light to match the pink of the bottle. Now before we start our shot here, we're gonna hit our bottle with a quick little spray of water to make it look a little bit wet and now we're ready to get our first shot so now using this app here on my phone I'm gonna start the pan which will rotate our product and once it comes around and shows our label I will stop the pan and we've got our shot now as you can see here we repeated the exact same process for our pink bottle and now we're gonna go into the editing process to show you how we can transform these clips new room Fancy microphone. Check, check. He stole that hat from his girlfriend. All right, here we are back up in the office. We're gonna edit this footage now, so let's dive right in. So what you're looking at here on my screen is Final Cut Pro X. This is what I use to edit all of my videos, but if you're not using Final Cut Pro X, that's okay. You can still follow along and do all the same stuff in any editing software. I wanna start off here by correcting the orientation and the position of our bottle in the shot. So what I'm gonna do is go up to View and show our horizon. I'm gonna go to my Transforms here and select this box, and I'm gonna move the bottle until it is centered. Centered. You can see that it is a bit off axis. And as we play through the shot, the axis actually changes quite a bit. So what we're gonna do is start here at the beginning of our shot, make sure the clip is selected. And we're gonna rotate our bottle until we have the correct orientation. I think negative one looks pretty good. So we're gonna set a keyframe there. We'll grab our playhead, move to the final frame of the clip. And then we're gonna continue adjusting this to make sure it is still even. I think negative 1.4 looks pretty good there. And again, just ensuring that our shot is centered. And now we're gonna hit done. So what I wanna do now is actually color correct our clip a bit to bring back some contrast and saturation. The reason we do this is because this will give us a cleaner contrast between the bottle and the background, which will make it easier for our keyer to distinguish the bottle from the green screen. So I'll go ahead and hit Command-6 on my keyboard. This brings up our color correction tools. And in our exposure, I'll start bringing down the shadows. I'll start bumping up the highlights fix our mid-tones. And then here in our saturation, I'm also just gonna bump up the global saturation a bit. And I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do here is go down to our effects tab and you can see that I've already searched for the keyer down here. I'm gonna drag and drop that on our clip. And automatically that does a pretty good job of removing our background, but it is not perfect because we still have the luminance of this little piece here that was holding up our bottle. And we wanna eliminate that completely and we'll know it's eliminated when it's completely black like we see here. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit to 200% and I'll scroll down. I'm gonna click on the sample color box here and I'm gonna create a box underneath our product making sure we're selecting that portion. And we'll zoom back out here and that is a nice clean key. The only issue I'm seeing now is if we turn off our keyer here, you could see that originally this was supposed to be green and when we turned it on, that zero grams of sugar is kind of grayed out. So we wanna fix that. Now we could go in and play around with some of these features like filling the holes and our spill level and try and get that back. 
I tend to run into issues when I start messing with that stuff too much. So what I actually prefer to do instead is to duplicate the clip and put it above our original footage. I'll remove the keyer on that top clip to bring back our green. And then I'm gonna go in and grab a shape mask from our effects here and drag that onto our top clip. I'll shrink it down to size so that it is just covering that zero grams of sugar label. And I think that looks pretty good. This method of fixing clips like this does take a second longer. You could avoid this altogether by using a different color background, like a blue screen would have worked great. Again, there are tools within the keyer that can also accomplish the same thing, but I just find I get a cleaner look when I do it this way. Now, speaking of shape masks, what we're gonna wanna do is actually add another shape mask to our bottom clip here, and that's gonna remove everything in the periphery that we don't need in our shot. We just want our bottle. So I'm gonna start adjusting the side here, making sure our bottle is isolated. And I always like to kind of feather out that bottom edge to make it a little bit cleaner. And I think that looks pretty good. So if we play our clip back, this is what it looks like. That is looking pretty clean. So something that I like to do in my workflow is I use a lot of compound clips and it lets me stay organized. So I'm going to show an example of that here. Instead of working with two clips constantly, what I'm going to do is just highlight both of them, right click and hit new compound clip. I'm going to name this keyed bottle and hit OK. And that gives us one nice clean clip. Now, the next thing I want to do here is a technique that will really spice up this shot. So I'm going to duplicate this clip by holding option on my keyboard and dragging down. And now that we have this new layer below our clip, what I'm going to do is go back into our effects and type flipped. I'm going to drag that onto our clip. I'll set it to vertical and using our Y position here in our transforms, I'm going to click and drag down until that bottom edge of the bottle is lining up. And then we're going to go into our opacity and lower it to 20% and hit enter. And now we've got a nice reflection. Now, once again, just for the sake of keeping things organized and knowing what's what, I'm going to compound this bottom clip here and I'm going to name it reflection and hit OK. That way, when we're looking at our timeline, we know exactly what's what. We've got our keyed bottle clip up here. We've got a reflection below it. This way, we can just ensure that we're not going to be getting confused and I promise you organization when editing is a huge advantage. If you're doing compositing style stuff like this in your editor and you're not naming your clips, it gets a little bit chaotic. So that's just a little tip. Now because the overall look we're going for is going to be this more retro and colorful kind of vibe, I do want to add to that before we bring in our background. So what I'm going to do is duplicate our top clip here again by holding option on the keyboard, clicking and dragging down and that duplicate clip is sandwiched in between our keyed bottle and our reflection. I'm gonna right click on it, make it a compound clip, and I'm going to title it Glow. And in my effects window here, I'm gonna type in Gaussian, drag the Gaussian blur onto our clip. That's quite a bit too powerful, so I'm gonna drag this down to about 30%. And I'm gonna hit Command-6 to bring up our color window. And I'm going to take the global color here and I'm gonna move it into that sort of reddish orangish area. Now back in our transforms here, I'm gonna adjust the scale X and the scale Y until we get the desired look. So I'm gonna sandwich this in the X axis just a little bit and then same thing in the Y axis. And I think that looks pretty good. So all there is left to do is lower the opacity to 50%. We don't want it to be too overwhelming. And here is what our shot looks like. All right, and now the next step, you guessed it, is to make another compound clip. I'm gonna highlight all of my clips here and right click, new compound clip, and I'm gonna call it orange bottle. Basically what that's done is it's taken all of those layers we created and condensed it down into one master layer that we can make adjustments to. So let's say I wanna add a zoom in effect. I'll make sure that our playhead is at the beginning here. I'll set a keyframe on 100% scale, bring our playhead to the end here to our final frame, and I'll just zoom in. And you can see that our reflection, our glow, and everything is affected by this, not just the bottle. Now I think it's time for some real talk because I've done a lot of ad reads for Storyblocks here on this channel and people keep asking me if it is actually worth it. Yes. Now, I mean this genuinely. If you are doing videos for clients, for YouTube, whatever it might be, if you ever need a drone shot, if you need some B-roll or stock footage, Storyblocks has it all. It is, in my opinion, one of the most simple and reliable ways to use stock footage without any worry of getting in trouble. And the best part is that with the unlimited all-access plan, you can download as many clips as your heart desires. There is no limit to how much you can download. Film burns, light leaks, Super 8 overlays, those weird TV color bars, or even breaking news graphics, they really do have it all. When you have a Storyblocks membership and you use the stock footage in your videos, whether that's your own videos or videos for clients, nobody is going to come after you for not owning the footage because you have the license when you get the plan. So if you are interested, go to the link down in the description below or go to storyblocks.com slash Daniel Schiffer to learn more about Storyblocks. All right, so we've got to find a cool background for a video and I'm thinking we'll start by searching looping abstract 
background. And you can see this gives us almost 2,200 results. So we've got a lot to pick from. And I think this one here actually just caught my eye. I like the way it's swirling around. So we're going to go ahead and click download and make sure that it's in the highest quality. And while we're at it, let's also get ourselves some particle assets. We'll download a few here. And lastly, I have an idea for something we can do with a splash. So I'm actually going to type in orange explosion. And we've got a few options here. I quite like this one. So I'm going to download that. All right. So now that we've got our stock footage, let's hop back into Final Cut. And you can see here that I've made an event for our stock footage. We've got our little flowy abstract background, our particles, and then we've got this explosion. So let's start by kind of bringing this abstract thing in behind our bottle here. We'll drag it underneath and cut it down to size. I do want to zoom in on this background quite a bit. So I'm going to click on it and scale up. And then I'm just going to move it around until I find a part of the clip that I think looks good with our bottle. All right, I think I quite like how it looks right there. So I'm going to hit done. And obviously this color of our background doesn't really match the bottle. So I'm going to hit command six. And in our color window here, I'm just going to kind of start adjusting things until we get a nice orange background that matches our bottle. I think that looks pretty good as far as orange goes. And I am noticing now that we've got this vibrant background in here that our bottle is kind of looking dull and flat against it. So I'm going to select our bottle clip and I'm going to add this effect called glow and I'll adjust it until I think it looks right. And I'm also going to go in our curves and adjust the overall contrast, make some more adjustments in here as well. And this is looking a whole lot better. This is what we had before. And then once we added our glow and our color adjustments, you can see it's a lot more vibrant. Now, this is where that one really small detail of having that Aperture MC light set to orange really makes a big difference. Without that extra little kick of color on the side here, our bottle would be pretty out of place and wouldn't tie in nicely with the background. But because we did put in that little extra effort to add that color to our subject, we end up with a much more cohesive shot where our subject does not ultimately look out of place on that orange background. I'm also gonna bring in this stock footage here to add another little extra shimmer to our shot. I'm going to cut it down to size and making sure it's selected. I'm going to set the blend mode to add and I'm going to scale up a whole bunch. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think this looks pretty cool and dynamic. Another really neat thing we can do is we can actually bring in this splatter asset, cut it down to our desired length. In our color panel, we can adjust the hue and the saturation to make it look more orange. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer by holding option and dragging upward. And I'm going to shift the hue of our top layer to make it look a little bit more pink or magenta. And back in our main inspector window here, I'm actually going to adjust our crop to have it split down the middle and I'll use our horizon as a guide. Now from our previous shot here, I'm going to click on both these backgrounds and I'll hold option and drag them over to duplicate them under our new shot that we're working on. I'll select both of these explosion layers here and make them into a compound clip and I'll name it explosion. And then in our effects window, I'm going to grab the Luma keyer and drag that on to punch out the black background. And now I'm going to quickly duplicate that abstract background layer and raise it above the original layer. And once again, in our hue and saturation curves, I'm going to shift the hue to make it more of that magenta or pink color. I'm going to adjust the exposure to bring it down a bit. And kind of like we did with the splash layer, I'm going to do the same thing with our background layer and adjust the left crop. And next within my titles here, I'm going to bring in a new adjustment layer and put it over top of all of that, cut it down to size. I'll make another color adjustment on the adjustment layer and bring down our exposure so that it's not too bright. And here's the fun part. I'm going to duplicate our bottle layer from before and put it over top of our new asset we created. And as you can see, we end up with something that looks like this. Looking at it now, I think I actually prefer the shot with just a single color background instead. And just as a reminder, look at the clip we started with. I think it's pretty amazing what you can do with a simple clip like this if you know how to use editing software and stock footage to your advantage. And if you wanted, you could actually take this a step further and use things like text and music, and you could make some pretty cool little sequences like this. But that is it for today's tutorial. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, feel free to give it a like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Daniel.Schiffer. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.